Take your Bibles, please. Turn to the book of Matthew, chapter 24. Matthew, chapter 24. We'll read verses 1 through 5 together. We'll read this passage responsibly. Matthew, chapter 24, verses 1 through 5. Matthew chapter 24, verses 1 through 5. And Jesus went out and departed from the temple, and his disciples came to him for to show him the buildings of the temple. And Jesus said unto them, See ye not all these things? Verily I say unto you, There shall not be left here one stone upon another, that shall not be thrown down. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us when shall these things be, and what shall be the sign of thy coming, and of the end of the world. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. And let's finish on verse 5 together. Ready? For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And let's pray. Father, thank you so much for the word of God. Thank you that you gave us a book that has every word in it that we need to live. Father, help us as we journey through this life, for we don't know at what moment you'll return. But may we be faithful to the end, whether it be by death or by the rapture. Fill our preacher with your power. May he help us tonight to not be deceived and tricked by the devil's forces. May we keep our eyes focused on you, please, in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. The sermon this evening is called The Deception of the Last Days. The Deception of the Last Days. Let me again read a verse to you. It says in Matthew 24, 3, As he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? This sermon is one about prophecy. Actually, this sermon, this sermon shows of the modern day fulfillment of prophecy. My recommendation is to you that what I tell you tonight, that you're careful that you're not being influenced. You be careful that you're not a victim of the deception of the last days. You see, in verse number 3 here, they ask the question, And what shall be the sign of thy coming and the end of the world? The disciples are asking Jesus about this thing called the, the, well, when Jesus comes again, or what they call the end of the world. The question is asked while they were on the Mount of Olives. Jesus then gives his answer. He says in verse 4 and 5, And Jesus answered and said to them, Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. Notice, when he makes this statement, they say, Lord, what, what, what tells us that the, the end times are there? What tells us that the end of the world's coming? And he tells them, uh, what, what, what are the signs? But he uses the word deceive twice. Well, it, it, it's because in the days just prior to his coming, people are going to be very, very deceived. Very deceived. People, I believe today, people are very easily deceived. We live, I think, in those days. I'm not the kind of person that would make a prediction about when Jesus is coming again. But I can look in the scripture, and if God tells us certain things will be taking place just prior to his coming, and then we see those things taking place, it would cause me to believe that his coming is very, very close. So Jesus says, ah, in the days just prior to my coming, in the days just prior to what they call the end of the world, people are going to be deceived. There's going to be a lot of deception going on. Then, later on, in verse 11 and verse 24, he even further emphasizes this thing. He says in Matthew 24, 11, And many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. Now that's the third time he's used the word deceive since the question was asked, what's it going to be like right before you come back? What's it going to be like right before the end of the world? Then we get to verse number 24 and he says this, For there shall arise false Christians and false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders, insomuch that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. And there it is again, 
four times now, Jesus' explanation after that question, what's it going to be like? How are we going to know? And Jesus says, right before I come back, right before the end of the, the, what they call the end of the world, that's how they ask the question, he said, people are going to be deceived. He hit it once and said, they're going to be deceived. He hit it again, he said, they're going to be deceived. He hit it again and said, there's going to be deception. He hit it again and said, there's going to be deception. Now look, anytime God says something once, you better believe it. But when God in the same passage of Scripture hits something twice, he's putting double emphasis on it. But if God will go as far as say something to us three times, I think he's telling us you better set up and pay attention. But in this passage of Scripture, a fourth time, he uses that word, deceived, 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 deceived. Hey, and folks, we live in a day where people are easily deceived. It, it, is it possible that this prophecy is being fulfilled right before our eyes? You say, well, Brother Owens, what's our best defense against the devil's deception? What is it? I'll tell you what our best defense against the devil's deception, that's this. Immediate obedience to the Word of God. Immediate obedience to the Word of God. Those of you that hear the Word of God, God says something clearly in the Scripture and you don't obey it, you're part of the prophecy of the last days. You're part of the deception. The easiest and the best way to defend ourselves against the devil's deception is to immediately obey the Word of God. No delay. Immediately obey. No debate. Immediately obey. No compromise. Immediately obey. No excuses. Immediately obey. Hey, don't make God explain it. Just obey it. That's the best way to keep yourself from being deceived because in these last days, deception is going to become more and more frequent and the devil's going to try to deceive people. Uh, I think people are easily deceived away from the right kind of churches. And today, people are easily deceived away from the right kind of things. Boy, do we live in a, in a, in a, in a religious society. Everybody wants to talk a little bit about Jesus here and a little bit about Jesus there, but it's not the same old, it's not the, the same Jesus of the Bible. It's so deluded. It's so, uh, uh, once again, I use the term religious. They're religious, but not Christian. There's a form of godliness, but they're denying the power thereof. And people are very, very deceived today. Now, in this sermon, I'll teach what tools the devil will use in the last days to deceive people. Listen to these verses. Colossians 2.8 says, beware, beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men. 2 John chapter 1, verse 7 says, For many deceivers are entered into the world who confess not that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh. There is a deceiver and an antichrist. There it is again, deceiver. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 14 says, That we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait. To deceive. Isaiah chapter 30 verse number 10 says, Which say to the seers, See not, and to the prophets, Prophesy not unto us right things, Speak unto us smooth things, Prophesy deceit. Boy, you listen to the, the charismatic uh, preachers today. You listen to those that are a part of that contemporary religious movement. And you know what they want? They want smooth talk. Smooth talk. An old-fashioned preacher gets up and throws an ever-loving fit and, hey, like I did earlier, saying, teenager, don't you show up at that youth activity and mess it up for everybody else. You're going to show up, obey, get in line, do what's right. Then there are people who go, oh, I don't like that. Maybe you're one of the deceived. Because here it says, in the last days, they want everybody to speak, speak smoothly and don't, don't raise their voice and don't call sin, sin. Let's smooth it all over. We won't, we won't call it being a drunk. We'll give it a fancy name. We'll call it a sickness. It's alcoholism. No, the, the Bible teaches it's drunkenness. But, but people in the last days, they don't like that. They don't like that. It's a part of the prophecy of the last days. And God said in the last days, one of the biggest things that's going to happen is deception. And I believe the deception of the lost, but I believe that even the very elect of God can be deceived to a deluded type of Christianity. Every deception that I'm going to mention tonight has been around since man's beginning. 
But in the last days, the devil turns his deceptive influence on high, and it works. God predicts that it's going to happen, and it works for the devil. Now, stay with me. I'll cover these quickly. But I want to tell you, remember now, I tell you because I want us to be careful not to be deceived in these last days. First of all, I think, uh, let, let, me, let me say this, I think the devil, one of the devil's main, work, main works is deceiving. In the book of Revelation, which is a book about the end time events, we see the devil's tactics and they're mentioned repeatedly. We wanted to go into that book of prophecy, the most popular book of prophecy, in, in, in the 66 uh, book compilation called the Bible. The most popular book about prophecy is the book of Revelation. Listen to these verses. Revelation 12, 9, And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil, and Satan which deceiveth the whole world. There the Bible tells us. Here's the book of prophecy telling us this, this devil is going to deceive the whole world. He wants to pull the wall over everybody's eyes. He, church, you know what? The church needs to get a, a, a bigger goal. The church says, oh, I'll, just, I'll just reach one here and reach one there. We ought to have the same goal the devil does. The devil says, I want to take the whole world out. I want to deceive the whole batch of them, every one of them. You know what? We ought to set a goal to reach the whole world for Jesus Christ. Listen to this, Revelation 13, 14, it says, speaking of the devil, and deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do. Hey, not every miracle that happens out there is of God. Here the Bible says the devil even commits some miracles and they're deceptive. Listen to Revelation 19, 20. And remember, I'm telling you, deception is one of the main tools of the devil. And more and more, as we see the day of Jesus approaching, Revelation 19, 20, it says, And the beast was taken, and with him the false prophet that was wrought miracles before him, with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast. There it is again. There is the deception of the devil. The people that take the mark of the beast, they have been deceived. They have been deceived somehow. Again, Revelation chapter 20, verse number 10 says, And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire. And I'm glad. I'm really glad that old smutty face doesn't get away with this. There are going to be a lot of people hurt because of his deception. But just so you all know, God's not been deceived. God knows who he is and what the devil is. And there's coming a day when the devil's going to get his dues. And I, I tend to believe that a part of this where he is cast into the lake of fire is a result of his deception. God, I think probably the day that he gets cast into the lake of fire, as he's being cast in, the, the, the Lord's angels that help to cast him in are going to say, there, take that for your deception. Because he is deceived. See, he intensifies his, his deception in these last days. Do you notice? Do you notice how easily people seem to be distracted away from the old time religion? Last week or so, I preached a sermon about preachers that are merely a remnant a remnant. There's barely a, 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 a few old-time religion preachers and barely a few old-time religion churches. And, and, and we, when, when people draw away and they get into this modern religion and when it turns its back on the Bible and turns its back on the old-time ways, you and I ask ourselves, how, they, how can they not see it? How can they not see it? Why do they not see? Well, that's part of it. God said in the last days, the devil will turn his deception on high. Secondly, let me tell you this. In the last days, riches will easily deceive people. Riches. Now remember, everything that, that deceives people through history uh, is going to be a part of our generation. But wait a minute. In the last days, the areas of deception will be turned on high by the devil. And I say riches are one of those things that easily deceive people. Matthew thirteen twenty two says, He also that received seed among the thorns is he that heareth the word. And the care of this world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word. And he becometh unfruitful. Here, the Bible talks about the, the, how the, 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 the riches choked the word. Maybe it means it could keep it from accomplishing what it should in someone's life. Riches deceive the unsaved into believing that maybe they don't need God. 
I, I've, I've spoken to uh, Christians that are, or maybe have some money. I'm talking about Christians that maybe have million dollars or millions of dollars. Many of them, many Christians will say it's very hard to get their rich friends saved because their rich friends don't think they need God. They'll take care of themselves. They're dependent on their own character. I've got news for you. Your own character may help you to be a success in life, but it won't get you eternal life. You have to be born again. That is done by another. You merely receive it as a gift. And in the last days, riches become very deceptive to people. Hey, folks, just look at what's happened in America in the last couple of years in regard to our economy and people's dependency on, on money, 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 and we borrow like, it, like, like it's going out of style and there's no tomorrow and we get bigger houses and bigger cars and, and we waste and we waste and we waste and we waste. Don't you tell me that the devil's not worked his way into our country and got people uh, blinded with this thing of riches. Riches can even deceive the saved into believing. Maybe that their money makes them too good to be soul winners and their money makes them too good to do certain things. Folks, you, did you know you can't buy your way out of your responsibility of being a soul winner? Now, we give to help get people saved. We give to help people get saved around the world. That's why we give to missions. But if you think you can give money, and that relinquishes you of your responsibility in regard to the people you are supposed to win to Christ, I'm sorry, you can't buy your way out of that responsibility. People chase after riches rather than the kingdom of God. And the Bible says that seek ye first the kingdom of God. And, and, and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. Oh, people cram money into the bank and under their mattress and into their 401k plan. And then they'll let the world die and go to hell. Every once in a while, somebody probably ought to reach into the kitty, pull some money out, and give it to the bus ministry to keep a bunch of boys and girls out of hell. But people everywhere, today we put money before God. There was a day when virtually all across Christianity, the Christians would say, I'm not going to work on Sunday morning, I'm going to church. Let the heathen work on Sunday morning, I'm going to church. But today, that's almost offensive for me to say. I'll guarantee you, somebody in this house will be mad at me. Tonight, because I just said that. But that's the way it is anymore. Well, I, I'm telling you, hey, and I'm telling you because I love you. I'm your friend. I'm not saying that to attack you. I'm telling you, folks, as we see the day approach, more and more there is a deception that the devil brings uh, to lost people and the devil brings across the church and the devil brings across uh, Christianity. And one of the deceitful things, the Bible talks about the deceitfulness of riches. Folks, riches won't make you happy. Being right with God will make you happy. Thirdly, I believe in the last days, liquor, liquor is going to see many, many people. You might throw in here uh, the drugs, but the liquor. Uh, Proverbs chapter 20, verse number 1 says, Wine is a mocker. Strong drink is raging, and whosoever is deceived thereby is not wise. Notice that word deceived. Now, that's the key word for tonight. As we worked our way through the book of Revelation in Matthew chapter 25, it's God brought it to our attention. He says, in the last days, deception is going to be multiplied. So all we have to do is look through the Bible, look at the areas that God warned us in, in our regular, average, everyday life that the devil comes to deceive us and know that deception will be turned on high in those areas. And here the Bible says, people will be deceived by liquor. Liquor promises happiness. But it gives sorrow. Liquor promises fun, but it gives hangovers. Liquor promises a life, an abundant life, but it just produces depression. Liquor is a great deceiver. And anybody in here that's ever been involved, you know exactly. Liquor promises you a good time, and it takes more from you than what, what you ever thought it would. It costs you, it messes you up, and liquor is a liar. Young people, liquor is a liar. It's a liar. It's a liar. It shouldn't be called Bud Weiser. It ought to be called Bud Dumber. Liquor. Lick, lick. Hey, they put it on the billboard and try to make it exciting to you and make it look glamorous. You know what they need to do? They need to show you the sleazy gal that's half undressed advertising a bottle of Jack Daniels. They need to show you what she looks like when she's been raped because she got drunk. They need to show you what she looks like because she crashed her car when she's all used up and dried up and all the operations she used to try to keep her body attractive because the liquor was stealing her life from her. You ought to see what she really 
looks like in life. Liquor's deceiving. And in the last days, the liquor and the drugs are going to run rampant, and I believe they're going to deceive many. Liquor lies to your brain. The Bible says in Proverbs 23, verse 29, it says, Who hath woe? Who hath sorrow? Who hath contentions? Who hath babblings? Who hath wounds without cause? Who hath redness of eyes? They that tarry long at the wine. They that go to seek mixed wine. Look not thou upon the wine when it is red, when it giveth its color in the, in the cup, when it moveth itself aright. At the last it biteth like a serpent. It stingeth like an adder. Thine eyes shall behold strange women, and thy heart shall utter perverse things. You know what all that's telling you? You get liquor in your brain. Your brain won't work right. And it deceives you. It makes you see what is not there. It makes you think you're going to enjoy what turns out bad. It makes you think that it's a good investment. When it's a bad investment, it'll steal your morality. It'll steal your health. It'll steal your money. And it promises everything that it takes everything. But in the last days, we'll see it more and more. More and more. You, 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 don't hear, you don't hear many throwing a fit about the liquor traffic anymore. It's part of the deception of the last days. But only that, I think, I think this, in the last days, people are easily deceived into thinking that they can sin and not reap the consequences. They can sin and not reap the consequences. Galatians chapter 6, verse number 7 says, Be not deceived, God is not mocked. But whoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. You understand, there the Bible is talking about the routine deception of life. But wait, we know that God said in the last days, the routine deceptions will become multiple. They'll become uh, numerous. They'll, they'll become more frequent. And here I say to you, I think in the last days, people are going to be easily deceived into thinking that they can sin and they will not have to reap the consequences. But God said, be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever ye shall uh, sow, you're going to reap. See, what is it that causes people who know better to commit sins knowing the heavy consequences? What caused them to do that? What makes people in this room to do some of the things you know, you know you're not supposed to do? You know it's against the Bible. You go ahead and take a chance. You're convinced, well, that bad outcome, that's for everybody else. That, the bad outcome of this sin, that's for everybody else, but not for me. It's part of the deception of the last days. In these days, the devil works overtime to convince us we won't reap what we have sown. Folks, nobody has ever gotten away with their sin. You say, well, I did it and I didn't get in trouble. Well, let me remind you of something. God doesn't always pay on Friday, but God always pays. What you better say is, you better say, well, I've not got caught yet. Because, because you will get it. I, I stand up here and throw a fit about young people being immoral. And I say, you better watch it, girls. You're going to end up pregnant out of wedlock. You better watch it, young man. You're going to get a, a gal pregnant out of wedlock. And you're going to take on a family when you're not mature enough. And you don't know what you're doing. You sit out there and say, I've been fooling around. I've been doing it. And, and it's not affected me that way. You better say it's not affected me that way yet. Yet. Hey, today people don't fear reaping because they're deceived. They're deceived. We today will run right into a sin, not even worried about what it will result in later. What is that? Part of the deception of the last days. Part of that deception. I believe this. I believe today another deception of these days. People are easily deceived by their feelings and their emotions instead of making their decisions based on the Bible and principles. And this one is amazing to me. Maybe in Christianity, the biggest problem we face today is people want to follow their hearts and their emotions instead of the Bible and the principles of the Word of God. Jeremiah 17, 9 says this, The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked, and who can know it? And God, of course, a routine deception of life is that our heart will lie to us. We're not to do what we feel like doing. We're not to do what we feel. We're to do what God said. But... Because it's the last days, the deception of the heart is intensified. The devil kicks it in high gear about this thing of people making their decisions based on their heart, making their decisions based on their emotions, making their decisions based on how they feel. I can't tell you how many people get up on Sunday morning and decide if they feel like going to church. 
feel like going to church? You go to church because God said to go to church. You don't tithe because you feel like it or what you think you tithe because God said to tithe. And today in Christianity, we now make our decisions based on our emotions and our feelings and how we see it instead of according to the commands of God. And that is the deception of the last days. We want to trust our feelings more than we trust God's Word. People, people's emotions are out of control in these days. Fewer and fewer people make decisions based on principle and more and more based on feelings. People are very unpredictable emotionally. There are more people, and, and I don't mean to hurt you, and I don't want to hurt anybody, and I think there are medicines that help certain people at certain times, but I'll tell you what, they're pumping medicine into people about their emotions so fast today, people can't even figure out what they do feel. Watch out now. Watch out. A part of the last days... The wicked philosophy of humanism has greatly affected, and, 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 and this increase of deception in people, emotional decision making is out of control. It's out of control. People make decisions based on how they feel. And we're to make decisions based on what God said. And the Bible tells us that the heart is deceitful. And in the last days, the devil is going to use that to destroy people. But not only that. I think in these last days, people are easy, easily deceived into thinking they have no real sin problem in their life. They have no real sin problem in their life. Listen to this. 1 John 1 8 says, If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. But in the last days, people more and more are going to be more and more satisfied with themselves. More and more satisfied with, with where they stand with God. And I'll tell you part of the reason why. Even those that go to a church like this where we, we try to call it straight, instead of comparing ourselves to Jesus, the Holy One, we compare ourselves to all the liberals out there. And we think, well, I'm far better than them. You're not supposed to compare yourself to all the liberals. Right. Young people, don't compare yourself to the rebel in the youth department. Compare yourself to Jesus. And the problem is, I think today we, we, we are virtually living in a time of deception where people become satisfied with their Christianity as if they have arrived. For instance, this sermon is for somebody else. You're glad somebody else is getting that. Well, why aren't you glad that you're getting it? The Sunday school lesson, that, that, I, I, that was for somebody... But not for me. That truth right there, that's for the real bad sinners. I'm basically a finished product, we say. All my sins are little ones. Folks say, y'all, you know, sin's big. My, 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 my lies are white. See how we are? I could preach the stuffings out of this auditorium about gossip. And the gossips will not face the fact it's them. I can preach my guts out. I can throw a fit. I can, I can throw a fit about women that won't submit to their husbands. You won't affect them. Sad. It's really quiet. But it's part of the deception of the last days. It's almost a callousness or a satisfaction that we have about ourselves. Hey, when was the last time you needed the altar? That's just the way the last days are. This is cute. A pastor was walking down the street when he came upon a group of about a dozen boys, all of them between the ages of 10 and 12. The group had surrounded a dog. Concerned lest the boys were hurting the dog, he went over and asked, What are you doing with that dog? One of the boys replied, This dog is just an old neighbor stray. We all want him, but only one of us can have, it, have him to take home. So we decided that whichever one of us could tell the biggest lie would get to keep the dog. Of course... The pastor was taken back by this thought. You boys shouldn't be having a contest telling lies, he exclaimed. 
He then launched into a ten-minute sermon against lying, beginning with, Don't you boys know it's a sin to lie? And he ended with, Why, when I was your age, I never told a lie, boys. There was dead silence for about a minute. Just as the pastor was beginning to think he had gotten through to the boys, the smallest boy gave a great big deep sigh and said, All right, pastor, you take the dog. I'll tell you something that troubles me. I, I, I travel the nation. As I travel, I get altar calls everywhere I go. It is very rare that I see someone under such deep conviction that they come to the altar weeping. Because our sin doesn't bother us anymore. Hey, old-timers, you remember? Remember when someone would walk down the aisle and their heart was broken and they would, they would cry and, and, and weep. And I don't mean to make a show. Sometimes you'd dismiss church and somebody would still be at the altar. Today, if somebody comes down the aisle weeping and you know they're weeping, everybody almost stares at them like, get control of yourself. You're embarrassing yourself. No, my friend, the rest of us are embarrassing ourselves because sin doesn't bother us anymore. And I'm telling you, we're getting closer and closer to the day that Jesus is coming because we're getting farther and farther away from conviction about our own sin. He said that was going to happen. He said it would be that way. Not only that. I think the deception of the last days are that people are easily deceived into thinking it's okay to hear the Word of God and not obey it. Just hear it and not obey it. You say, how do you think? Well, James 1.22 says, Be ye doers of the Word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. You see, whatever it is, there was a routine deception in the last days. That deception is going to be magnified. It's going to be multiplied. It's going to be intensified. And there it said, we hear the word, but we don't do the word. You know, it's our duty to obey the word, not just debate it. We're to do it, not just hear it. We're to act upon it, not just consider it. People, you know, you, you have those that think they're real, real smart. They hear the preaching and they, they listen and say, well, that, that's, that's interesting to think about. Well, that's, inter- that's an interesting thought. I don't preach to you to be interesting. I preach to you to change your life. Although I am quite interesting. In these last days, people approach preaching like a Hollywood movie. You watch for entertainment, you came by the theater, and you go home. Not only that, not only do I think we're deceived into thinking it's okay to hear it and not do it, I think people in the last days are deceived just by sin itself. The Bible says in Hebrews 3.13, But exhort one another daily while it is called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. Folks, sin's like a spider web. The deeper you get in, the more stuck you are. Sin's a liar. Sin's a deceiver. Sin never pays. Sin takes you deeper than you want to go, keeps you longer than you want to stay, and costs you more than you want to pay. Sin runs wild today, and people convince themselves it's just this day and age. Right. Deceived. Sin is as bad today as it ever was. God's, God has not tempered his feeling about sin God, 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 God's not satisfied with the rebellion of this day. He's not. But the Bible says we'll be, we'll, we'll be deceived by sin. Let me give you another. I think in these last days we're going to have to be careful because lust will easily deceive us. Lust will easily deceive. Ephesians 4.22 says that you put off concerning the former conversation the old man which is corrupt according to the deceitful Lusts. Lust blinds people. It's blinding. So deceiving. You, boy, uh, the, the, when, the, the, when the hunting season comes in and, and uh, the, the rut comes in, a buck becomes stupid immediately. Become pretty stupid. His lust gets out of control. 
he'll be shot. Let me tell you something. Lust in this day and age is out of control. Lust for money causes people to lie and steal. Lust for position causes people to hurt others to get promotion. Lust for praise causes us to lift ourselves up. Hey, self-satisfaction is out of control. It's almost like today, it's every man for himself. Give me, 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 give me. What can I have? What can I have? What can I get? Take care of me. What do I want? Give it to me. Give it to me. Give it to me. God said in the last days, men's lusts will be out of control. This promiscuous society, it's sad. The filth that's everywhere. I say it, I'll continue to say it. Young people, keep your hands off each other until you're married. And if you're married, there's one person that you're to be with, and that is your mate. And that's it. That's it. Keep your last under control. But in these last days, there'll be more and more babies born out of wedlock and more and more abortions, and there'll be more and more uh, 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 divorces and more and more adulteries and more and more fornication. Don't you get caught up into it. I'm finished. Let me make this one more application. I believe our pride and pride will be a deceiver of the last days because in Jeremiah 49:16 it says, Thy terribleness hath deceived thee and the pride of thine heart. Remembering, anything that is a routine deceive, deceiver of the devil and the last days will be intensified. God knows if there's a problem we have. It's when we're deceived through pride. We, de- we get deceived about ourselves. Pride blinds us. Pride makes us sure we're in the right when we're in the wrong. Pride makes us confident when we shouldn't be. I see more sinful pride among God's people today than ever before. It's a self-destructing pride. Humility is almost today seen as a weakness. Humility means somebody can jump on you and hurt you instead of respect you and admire you. You say, well, well what makes me know if I'm, I'm proud? Let me ask you this question. How much time do you pray? Because, you see, if you don't pray, that means you think you can do it by yourself. How much time do you spend in your Bible? It's the book that will strengthen you. You can tell me you're not proud all you want, but when you won't go to the book of God's strength and pray to the God of strength, then you're dependent on you. You're dependent on your thinking and your strength, and that is pride. Pride is not necessarily that you've got your snotty nose in the air and you walk around arrogantly, though that could be a part of it. Pride is how dependent on God are you. In the last days, Christians will be deceived by their pride. I want to warn you about something. You say, preacher, I seem to be making it. I'm coming along in church. I'm faithful. And I really don't have my life in a great big mess. But I'm not really reading my Bible or praying. I get ready. It's going to get you. This may be the sermon that ought to warn you to get back to God. But the Bible tells us in the last days, listen to the verse. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming and the end of the world? Then Jesus answers. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. You can go through the book of Revelation and see the word deception and the devil over and over and over and over again. The closer we get to the coming of the Lord, the more deceived even God's people are. We just don't see it as the devil deceives us away from God. Let's bow our heads and close our eyes.